So, hi everyone. Thank you for having us here today. Uh, we are going to talk about Alexa skill design patterns and principles, but actually not only because we made it on time to do a Drupal contribution about Alexa, of course, uh, that we think it might be very interesting for, for the community. So we are also going to cover that during this, this talk. Um, so I'm Alessandra Petromili and I am Chief Experience Officer at Buildings Italia, meaning that I'm also a user experience designer. And here there's my colleague Raffaele, who is a software engineer, and of course also a Drupalista, as I am too. But first of all, let's start um, about talking um, about Alexa. So uh, I guess probably every one of you already know what it is, but just to summarize a little bit, it is an um, Amazon virtual assistant. So you can basically ask uh, to Alexa any kind of questions. You can also um, use Alexa to, um, um, let's say, say uh, to your intelligence on uh, appliances to switch on or switch off and so on. And of course, you can also use um, any application that uh, has been made uh, for Alexa. Those applications are called skills and they don't um, uh, rely, of course, on the device, but they are on the Amazon cloud. <coughs> Uh, but I don't want to go into too much technicalities because actually uh, I want to talk to you uh, about design. So uh, what I was saying is that um, I, want to, uh, I want to introduce you uh, to design with, uh, with Alex, of course. And um, regarding challenges, what I see it was quite difficult is that uh, actually vocal interfaces create a series of expectations that raise the level of quality that our users are expecting. Um, this is happening, for instance, um, if you think about when you use a graphical user interface and something, well, goes badly with it, you usually think that it's your fault. But uh, when the same happens with a vocal user interface, you usually think that it's the system fault. Well, or at least that's what on average is happening. And this is unfortunately um, the reason why. So we all think that we are quite expert in uh, having a conversation. Uh, so of course, in speaking with each other and in using this kind of vocal communication. Uh, well, we all learn to, uh, to speak when we are around two or three years old, and that makes sense that we think we are expert in that. Um, so what shall, shall we do in order to create um, a skill that has also a good retention rate? Because, you know, here we have another problem. So if our application does not meet the criteria of reliability, utility, and easy of use, what's happening is that the week after our users are downloading the app, uh, the 6% of them only are actually continuing to using it. These are data coming from voice labs that are like 2018 data, so quite recent. Um, why is happening that? This is happening because most of the time we are not able to uh, create an application that um, our user feel really useful. So how are we trying to do it? Uh, so in the skill that we have uh, designed and developed till now, uh, we are always starting from the user, of course, and we are following the process that you see uh, here. So uh, we start with the goal definition, and to do that, we use a framework called Customer Development Interviews uh, that has been developed by uh, Cindy Alvarez, that you maybe know. Uh, it's a very good tool um, that helps us understand what our customer really needs and what the final, final customer also needs. Um, I really suggest you to, uh, to deep dive into it because it's really useful. Um, after that, of course, you have to, uh, to define the personas. But since we have also a system involved here, uh, of course, you need also to define the personas for the system. Uh, you can think uh, that it's really simple, but actually it's not. Because when you are uh, designing a skill, you also have to think about which kind of language that skill should use, so which kind of words, uh, if those words are going to be very simple, or maybe if your target user is... I don't know, a librarian, maybe you want to use a, a different kind of language. And also, uh, you have to, to define the use cases in which uh, your skill is going to be used. Um, this uh, is really important because often the context uh, of your product is not okay with an interaction uh, like the voice one. So often you need to um, 
to use voice and graphical interfaces, or maybe just the context in which your user is, is not suitable for voice. For instance, is if uh, a client asks you uh, for a skill that is used in a, in a shop, maybe that's not really the, the best place because it could be noisy. Or also, um, if you need to create a skill, um, for instance, we are working on, on something related to uh, emergency stuff. And uh, in that case, we really needed to study the context and see uh, in which cases actually the user is able to, uh, to be close to the device and if really uh, that's something that could be useful for that. And then you have to define the script. The script is the real interface of the system. And uh, here there's a very uh, big difference between uh, um, designing for graphical user interfaces because you know, when we, we create a graphical user interface, we always look for consistency. Uh, but when we create a, a voice user interface, we have to look for repetition. Uh, sorry, we have not to look for repetition, the, the opposite actually. Um, for instance, if you talk with a friend of yours and he's always repeating the same sentences and the same phrases, uh, you find it very boring. Um, and that's the same that is happening with a uh, voice user interface. So you should create a dialogue between Alexa and the system um, that it's entertaining for the user and also uh, you should create a dialogue that helps the user to come to, come to the goal uh, in different ways. So basically you have to define different paths to reach the same goal. Um, so you start from the dialogues but these are not enough because after the dialogue you have actually to create the conversation flow. Um, that's an example of conversation flow. So that's a diagram that, starting from um, your dialogue, uh, is helping you to understand where the conversation could actually fail. And that's really, really important because uh, if you know where the conversation failed, you can also create a fallback uh, that makes the conversation still enjoyable for the user. And also, that's, uh, this is really what helps you to create a different path to reach the same goal. Because it's not something you can do only with the script, otherwise you would have to write tons and tons of them, and it's simply not possible. Um, I want also to suggest you the use of this, uh, of this tool. It's called Utterances Generator. Again, we are human, so we cannot create tons and tons and tons of sentences, uh, but we can at least create the best one and then use this tool to create all the synonyms. Uh, it's working in many languages, so and I, fi I find it uh, working actually pretty well. It's helping us a lot with the skill we are, uh, we are developing. And last but not least, it's also really important to do usability testing on um, the, the first draft of your skill. So we usually um, use the um, Wizard of Odds technique, uh, meaning that the skill is not developed yet. Uh, but uh, but still, we can uh, we can check if the language is working, if the fallback are working, if uh, well we always discover something something new uh, that we didn't know. So that's why I think you should really do it. Um, well, before um, giving Raffaele some time to talk about the Drupal contribution, I also want to highlight some data about Alex and e-commerce because the idea of the contribution came really um, actually for, from a situation we had with a client. Uh, so he has a, a Drupal commerce website and uh, we thought that would be really nice to integrate this, uh, this e-commerce we website with, uh, with Alexa. In Italy, um, the uh, possibility to, uh, to pay uh, through Alexa skill is coming very soon, so probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so we wanted to, to be ready, also because from the data that you see here, from UK and USA, you see that half of the people that own a smart speaker are actually buying something through it. Uh, these are data from OCNC. And also, from these other data, you see that people are buying mainly standalone items in the categories of electronics, for instance, or home wear, and so on. So that's also very important because, of course, you have to think again about the use case and the context. So you have to imagine that people are, at the moment, usually buying only single items. But then what we asked ourselves was, OK, that's all very nice. Uh, OK, it's really cool to have a skill. But what if uh, our customer, and that's the case most of the time, of course, is not a developer, and he actually wants to update the products 
or uh, items or sentences inside the skill and he cannot do it because he is not a coder. So that's how uh, we are integrating Drupal into it. So I want to do a first overview of, on the Alexa skill generation process. Uh, these are more or less the steps that you need to perform to create a new Alexa skill. So you need to insert the skill metadata, the, the metadata that will uh, appear on the Alexa store when you, uh, buy, when you buy, when you install the skill. So you need to define an invocation name for the skill because uh, per language, because you, the invocation name is the name uh, that the user will say to to call your skill. So uh, you need to add samples, utterances, and intents. So uh, basically, uh, the phrases provided by the user and uh, and the intents of the user. You need to define slot types. Uh, slot types are basically you can consider slot types basically tokens inside your utterances. So, uh, for instance, if I want to buy a product, uh, you can do, Alexa, how much does a product cost? So product is the slot type, is the token. You need to, at the moment, you need to manually add some of uh, those values because um, for predictable inputs, you need to insert into the interaction model all the possible all the, all the possible values. So Alexa knows uh, what are the possible values that uh, can trigger the the specific intent. So you need to add synonyms uh, to uh, related to, to your uh, Alexa skill. You need to configure an endpoint uh, in AWS Lambda uh, Lambda function for in most of the cases. You need to write the code of your Lambda function. Uh, you need to write your server your server side code, basically the Drupal controller, for instance. And you need to test your skill. Um, there are some downsides into this to this process. Uh, repetitive operation for each customer. We got di different customers uh, that needs an Alexa skill that does the same for, for an e-commerce. Uh, each of the customer wants to know how much does a product cost. <laughs> so uh, the, also this is not versionable. Not, not versionable. It, it's not real, uh, it, it cannot stay on, on Git. For instance, you, you can track the changes. You can track the changes all over the time the, that are the, done to your skill. So what we tried is to uh, integrate Drupal into this process. We wanted the we want the Drupal talks with, with the interaction model of, of Alexa. We, we don't want a Drupal and Alexa to be separate. So, uh, for instance, we want to avoid the point 0.5 of the slide manually. Uh, we want to, that custom slot types are generated from Drupal. So, uh, uh, Ask CLI is a, is a common line interface that allows you to, to manage your Alexa skill and related resources. So, uh, for instance, you here is all the documentation on Amazon.com. For instance, you can run the ask new command to create a, a skill that lives into code. Uh, uh, so you can track changes to your skill. So uh, we developed a, a first version of Alexa Skill Manager that uh, treats uh, basically integrated the it integrates the interaction model of Alexa to, to into Drupal. So uh, interaction model is treated is treated as uh, a Drupal configuration entities. So utterances, intents, slots, synonyms are generated by Drupal and defined and can be changed by the content editor by an editor. We developed a pre predefined uh, lambda function so we can reuse the lambda function across the across the multiple installations of, of Drupal. You can also override the change to your Lambda function. You can also extend. Uh, so answers provided by Alexa can be changed with, like, without writing a line of code. So you can go to the interface of Drupal, change the answers, and change the response provided by Alexa. Uh, custom slots are generated by, by Drupal, so are managed by Drupal. And skills are exportable and reusable across multiple Drupal instances. So uh, we try to eliminate rep the repetitive operations behind that. <coughs> Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. I'm crazy. So, yeah, it's it's possible. It's possible. So, uh, so this is a, a 
a quick demo, a very quick demo of, of all this. Uh, basically, uh, we start from a fresh installation of Drupal and we create an Alexa skill in a few minutes. So, <laughs> Um, as a simple Alexa skill with no account linking, with, with, no, uh, uh, with no Amazon Pay integration, but we create a, a very a skill in 10 15 minutes. <laughs> so uh, we start the video. Okay. So, okay, this is a fresh installation of Drupal. We enable the module. So uh, we go to Alexa Skill Manager. And first of all, we add the intent because we need to define what, what the intents of the Alexa skill are. So we add an intent that is, that is treated as configuration entity. So we add the, the label is fresh pizza, you know, we are Italian, so fresh pizza, fresh pizza price intent. This is an internal label. So the intent name that would be provided to Alexa, the interface could be, uh, it's an initial interface. So uh, we define the slot name and, and we use the drupal.custom.commerce product variation title. So uh, that Drupal knows that, that the product that we receive from Alexa is the, it's a, a title of the product of the Drupal commerce. So it needs to associate, to associate the product to the, the commerce entity, the, the, the product entity on Drupal commerce. Uh, the same we define a Drupal variable name that is the one that is returned by Drupal and, and we connect them uh, to uh, a simple entity path we, we're working on the interface. Uh, we define samples uh, utterances so uh, the, the possible inputs that could be provided by the Alexa user. How much does a product cost? We need to uh, separate it by, li separate it by uh, line so we can, we can insert uh, an utterance per line. The, the answer provided by Drupal always using the, the tokens. So a product costs $3, for instance. We save and we create the first intent. So uh, now we need to, add, to create our uh, skill data, the first skill data. We, so we go to, uh, we add an Alexa skill. And this is an, an internal label. So uh, the language of the Alexa skill, uh, at the moment um, uh, you have a subset of languages. Uh, we have the summary, this is, these are the data that, uh, that, that the user will, uh, will see on the Amazon store when, when he, when he downloads the, the skill. So we have a summary, we, ex we have example phrases, so how much does a pizza cost, how much uh, the other type of pizza cost. And so we give a name to the skill. We 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 get we set the invocation name from Drupal. We we give a description for always for uh, the Amazon store, and we associate the skill with the previously created intent. Uh, and so we we generated our, we we have uh, our first skill. So uh, we now add sign no names because. Uh, we, with the input is predictable, so uh, we want that, for instance, when you say uh, margarita, uh, that is a type of pizza, you, you don't understand, you don't, you don't understand that margarita is a cocktail, but it's a pizza, so. Uh, and then we, uh, I had this problem while working uh, on it. And, uh, and so, uh, when, when Alexa receives uh, uh, margarita, it will associate to the pizza margarita, not, not, not the cocktail, creating the synonym. So uh, now we can download a skill. Uh, we are developing a, we are developing a, a Drush command to do this uh, also in Jenkins with, with continuous integration to, to update our skill. So it downloads a, an archive with, the, with all the stuff inside. And uh, um, okay. So this is the content of the of the archive. We got a lambda function, a predefined lambda function. We got the interaction models that are generated by Drupal, and we got the skill.json with the metadata. So uh, we insert the, the downloaded file, the downloaded files into a previously created project with the ask new command. This is a fresh product that you can create with one command using the ask CLI. You know, this will create a fresh product. 
So uh, you you put these files in inside the project, inside the, the see the skill project. Okay. Now you only need to deploy the project. Uh, say okay. Switch to this. <coughs> We deployed the project, so we uh, now this is very important because in our e-commerce we got two products. In this instance, uh, in this instance of Drupal Commerce, we got two products: the marinara and the margarita pizza. The margarita has a price of three dollars. So if we, if we now we want to test the, uh, sorry, we want to test the skills, the skill, and uh, now we're gonna ask to Alexa, how much does the margarita cost? If it works, okay. This is the Alexa Developer Console. Here you, here you can simulate all the behavior of your skill. So you can provide uh, text input. <coughs> and Alexa uh, answer us, Margarita costs $3. So we develop the skill without writing a line of code. This is, this is the this is the final this is the final destination that I, I wanted to achieve. So <laughs> uh, now we're working on it. We, we're developing the Drush command. We're developing uh, account linking with OAuth and uh, the the Amazon Pay integration. These are the three milestones that we that we are uh, trying to achieve. But but at the moment you can use this for. Simple skills that require uh, no uh, no account linking, but but you can use this. It's in development. It's in development version, but it's working. So uh, you can join us for contribution to Alexa and finish this, uh, this uh, integration with account linking. And the next days I'll be here trying to to, to working at the integration uh, and the account linking, and also to write uh, functional tests. Uh, about it, and uh, you can you, you can fill the survey if you if you want to give feedback to DrupalCon uh, Amsterdam. And thank you, thank you very much.